advanced minds of society over the years technovanza has effectively progressed towards its goal of taking technology to the society by meritoriously passing on the flame of expertise to light more torches pioneers of diverse field including dr apj abdul kalam mr ratan tata gaur gopal das and many others have graced technovanza with their presence while progressively illuminating young minds to new areas of interest with utmost pride we are exhilarated to bring out the final lecture of the arglas conclave 5.0 while adding an extraordinary gem to our star studded list of personages our guest today is the builder extraordinaire and the man responsible for changing the skyline of mumbai today we are pleased to welcome the phenomenal dr niranjan hiranandani Dr Niranjan Hiranandani is a co-founder and managing director of Hiranandani Group of Companies. He completed his schooling at Campion School Mumbai and graduated with a Bachelor of Commerce degree honors with a distinction of standing second in Mumbai University. Adding to his professional qualification, he completed his FCA from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and he completed his doctorate in philosophy with a thesis in housing revolution in india challenges and prospects with his profound knowledge sharp business acumen and ambitious attitude he has been conferred with the leadership role across various prominent business organization and chambers by industry pundits from being a forbes listed top indian rich real estate developer to co-founder of india's top real estate company there is much more to add to his profile sir this small introduction wouldn't do enough justice to your numerous accomplishments the impact that you created on the next generation of professionals is the very result of your perseverance and simplicity we're truly honored to have you as a guest we also have with us here today the director of vgti dr dhiren patel sir and the dean of student activities and alumni dr rohan daruwala sir director sir uh, would you like to say a few words i think i'm fine but anyway okay so welcome to vjti uh, we will be very happy to uh, welcome dr niranjan hiranandani as a distinguished speaker today in our das conclave 5.2 as vjti uh, our uh, rather my vision and rather everybody's vision is to improve the teaching learning research and innovation ecosystem and uh, taking technology to society our uh, brand vjti is highly reputed and we see lots of young students are coming into vjti as their main you know career st stepping stone with the lots of inspiration and aspiration in this pandemic time we are operating from uh, working from home this teaching learning is happening and evaluation has been become a great challenge but at the same time the opportunities have come and the opportunities have come in terms of uh, we could able to engage Uh, anybody whom we, whom we want to engage with our students and as a result we are getting a lots of dignitaries who are coming on this platform and uh, talking to our student or interacting with them so i am sure that this uh, uh, today's our glass uh, conclave would be much more fruitful and uh, we are looking forward to further fruitful association with hiranandani group and vjti thank you thank you so much sir Uh, for our audience we will have a q and a session after the lecture so please leave your questions in the live chat below without any further ado let's be part of a conversation of a shared future with the guidance of clearly the best sir passing it on to you now a very good evening to each and every one of you dr viren patel thank you very much for this invitation nice to have mr dr rohin daruwala and thank you sai for your generous introduction it's my privilege to have come back to vgti i come back simply because uh, in the same month of 2019 i had the opportunity to speak to a whole quadrangle of students in vgti and it was such a joy meeting each and every one physically of course with technology changes and the opportunities that have come across i am now sitting in my home far <laughs> hill and we are able to communicate and be able to interact with each other this change itself indicates an opportunity for each and every one of us all the ideas being the challenges 
and the nuances create opportunity for what they call entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are all about these opportunities that are created. Abdul Kalam is what you mentioned uh, uh, just now, Sai, and I'm very happy to tell you that Abdul Kalam also talked about being job creators and not job seekers alone. And this is an opportunity which each and every one of us has here today. I've been a chartered accountant by qualifications, but being in the construction industry, uh, it has been an opportunity for me to actually change into an entrepreneur. So to some extent, I do have the personal experiences that I have to share with you in some of these lines and ideas, and to also take out opportunities of what is happening with so many other leaders in the entire world. And I do hope that this will enthuse each and every one of you to see new lines of opportunity that is there. Challenges are challenges, but when you convert these challenges into opportunities, that is when you become an entrepreneur. So the definition of entrepreneur is more defined during COVID times. And these are the changes which you should treat as an opportunity in our lives, rather than worrying about the negatives that such COVID times and difficult times actually bring to you. Now, the first thing when you want to become an entrepreneur over a period of time is to think about how you can actually do and study more than your chosen field of study. So if I'm a chartered accountant, or if you're an engineer, then if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to start looking at other aspects of skills that you really need to imbibe over a period of time. Nobody has all the skills together, but an entrepreneur gets an idea of picking up many skills as he goes around his whole life. In my time, it was very, very difficult in order to become an entrepreneur because there was no such thing as startups. There were no such things as incubators. There was no other idea of technology driven ideas of entrepreneurships and incubators. Today, we have more than 150 university incubators that we have. And these 150 incubators have created more than 900 new companies in the last five years. So the opportunity in this day and time, statistically and in reality has been much more easier than during my time, because there was no such opportunity for incubators. There was no such time and opportunity where startups were being funded, but India was always a country of entrepreneurship. So if you have better opportunity today to become an entrepreneur, it's easier. But remember that we and all people have been entrepreneurs in this country much before the startup culture and opportunity came about what it is there. So today we do find, and I think it is important for uh, campuses like VGTI, IIT, various other colleges and institutions to work through the startup system and incubation that we need to do. I'm sure that this will become an opportunity for students who are there in our colleges and in our university. India, as I said, is a land of opportunity. And the new age and time, and I'm going to go back to the older age and time also, the youngest entrepreneur in India today is Tilak Mehta, who at age 16 is the founder of the app-based courier service in Mumbai, known as Papers and Parcels. Then we have another entrepreneur in India, Ritesh Agarwal, age 27, who set up the OYO, OU. That's another entrepreneur. We also have Sri Lakshmi Suresh, age 23, founder of eDesign and Tiny Logo, being the youngest CEO and youngest web designer in the world. Can you imagine? That's an Indian. Then we have Trishin Arora, age 27, 
founder of tax security. Also, I want to give a distinction. In India, we have people who have been aged, but still they have been entrepreneurship. My favorite is of course, Captain, Le Captain Nair of the Leela Hotel. At the age of 62, he decided, he was captain in the army, he got into textiles as a business. And at age 62, he decided to set up a chain of luxury hotels. And at the age of 92, he died, I believe at age 92, he had seven of the best hotels in the entire world. So you can quite imagine the entrepreneurship in our country doesn't only belong to the young and the startups and others. It has been there for ages and we have many cases like that. Mr. Dhirubhai Ambani set up the Reliance Industries Hotel and now today becomes, his son becomes the richest man in India. And this is not many years ago, it's about 45, 50 years ago when Reliance actually started the entrepreneurship journey. So India is a land of opportunities. You have got people yesterday who did entrepreneurship and these opportunities have come. There are now opportunities and it is more now easier to have these new opportunities than it was in my day and time when we became entrepreneurs in this country. This is one thing which I wanted to share with you. The opportunities are there. How do I take it? And what is it that brings to the table? So now I will shift from the idea of what my personal experiences have brought to the table. And what is it that makes people like Mr. Ambani, like Captain Dyer, or any other entrepreneur to become successful? The first thing is he has to see where is the opportunity? Where is the gap in the thing? In this day and time, of course, a technology-driven opportunity has a faster pace of success and is likely to get more investments. So after you have identified your uh, project or your opportunity, if it is further technology-driven, there is a greater opportunity for us in order to make this happen much more easier. The second thought in my mind about successful entrepreneur is to take things closest to your heart. I remember when we started in the real estate business, uh, I used to make many buildings, but they were single buildings. But at the end of the day, it left me quite unsatisfied. And I really re realized that we needed to create something which would uh, actually satisfy myself. I wanted to create a project where the buildings, the, the, the schools, the colleges, the hospitals, the gardens, uh, the commercial, the residential, all would be in one background which would really do it. And ultimately today, Hiranandani Gardens or Hiranandani Estate in Thane or Hiranandani Gardens in Pawai is it. So one of the thoughts is that the entrepreneur should think, of course, through his mind and through the budgets and through the calculations of spreadsheets that you do, but it should also have a thing which is close to your heart. Once you have that, then you are able to exert yourself much, much more than you would be able to do normally because entrepreneurship is not easy. It requires a lot of hard work and a commitment to excellence. So you have to constantly remember that if you want to be an entrepreneur, pick up something which is a target closest to your heart, Think of solutions that are possible to do, but always, always, always remember, keep it close to your heart in order to make it successful and be able to overcome the hurdles that we really, that we could possibly do. Once you are, it is closest to your heart, I assure you one thing, that you can put in a lot of hard work and even when troubles do come, you actually push yourself to overcome it because there is no project and no entrepreneur who has not gone through some sort of pain to do it. Look at the idea of what is geo in the Ambani field of it. I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity on the other side. 
I remember attending, uh, I think it was about uh, 12, 15 years ago, when uh, there was a function where uh, Mr. Mukesh Ambani was there. And at that point of time, the mobile cost, 12, 14 years ago, the mobile cost was nearly uh, 33 rupees a minute talk time. And uh, he made an announcement that day that he would make the calls cheaper to the extent of less than one rupee a minute. Everybody scoffed at his idea and never believed that such a thing could ever happen in the mobile industry because it was we were paying 33 rupees a minute. And this was crazy. So we found slowly but surely the technology changed, the opportunities changed. Uh, and finally, we have talk time, which has become so cheap, less than one rupee a minute. And in some cases, when it is bundled with other services, talk time is even free. So this is something which I have learned over a period of time. And I think you, once you have an opportunity and a thought process to work towards it, it's a great one. And the, the geo example is, of course, one of the best India has even been able to get. The other thoughts which really improve myself in the work that I do is something which I want to share with my young friends. And it's very, very interesting way to be successful. The idea came from over a period of time, learning from examples of other people. And slowly I have come to a conclusion that if today I keep on bettering myself every single day of my life, maybe just 1% every day over a period of time, I can do great work. If you're playing tennis, if you're playing a game, if you're writing an essay, if you're doing a project, if you're building a building, if you're making a road, if you're doing any activity that you are, commit to yourself that the next time you do this activity, you're going to do it at least 1% better. If I made a speech last time to VGTI students, I must commit myself that today's speech, I should make an effort to speak better than what I did last time. If you learn to do this activity, and it is extremely important for all people who actually are doing any sort of work, not necessarily being an entrepreneur. If you do anything, if you're teaching, if you're working, if you're doing service, how can I improve my work output 1% better the next time I take up this work? And this is something every great person does. I've watched Mr. Amitabh Bachchan over a period of years, and I see that his commitment level to his work has always improved over a period of years. And it's quite a, it's, it's quite a shocking thing. He's in his late 70s, and uh, uh, it's fantastic to see a person at that age and time also commit himself to improve himself every time and uh, uh, delivering better and better every time that he picks up any activity and he's gone through his ups and downs in life, but he always endeavors to keep on improving himself. The other interesting thing that I have found about entrepreneurs is the fact, and even other people who are very successful, is that they continue to be learners all their life. Now, many of us finish my, your education, whether it's my chartered accountancy, your engineering, uh, your MBAs, whatever is the learning that you do, we tend to put an end to learning uh, because we already have a job or we're already into an entrepreneur activity and uh, we know the subject fairly well and we have learned it. But over a period of years, one of the biggest things that I learned from my illustrious father is no more now. Um, he was an ENT surgeon. Uh, a very reputed one, Padma Bhushan, uh, Danvantri Award winner, and extremely successful. At the age of 82, one day he tells me in top of the morning that Niranjan, I'm going to go to Germany to learn a new operation. And I said, Dad, are you 
crazy. At the age of 82, you want to go and learn a new operation? I'm pretty shocked. So he said, yes, I do. And, uh, and, and believe you me, at age 82, he went to Germany, learned a new operation, though he himself was very learned. And in fact, he created a lot of operation techniques himself. He went to learn this new operation even at age 82. So one thing I have learned, whether you're in profession, whether you're in teaching, whether you're in any other activity, it's good and great to be a learner all the time, especially if you're an entrepreneur. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, remember, you have to continue to be a learner all the time. You know, this is something which I've learned. The other thing which is very interesting on my observation of uh, successful people, not necessarily entrepreneurs, successful people is that they get involved in the activity very passionately. Research is also all about that. Many people get into research and then work out, have failures, but those who really work passionately on them are the ones who succeed not once, not twice, but all the time. Of course, they have failures in between and they do not success, I mean, do not have successful innings every time they play cricket or every time they do an activity, every time that they go and do something of a performance that they need to do. But they continue to work hard and excel and put a passion behind the whole thing that is done. All people from time to time can be successful provided they have the gut and the perseverance to do so. So can we all persevere at what activity that we are doing? The, 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 your institution is 150 years old or close to that. In spite of that, the, the activity continues to grow and keeps on improving from time to time. You have to use the platform of what you learn and to use that as a springboard for success. There's no point in resting on the laurels of your education or other talent that you have. Some people are more talented than others, but the person who continues to improve will beat all the rest of the others because he and she or she will continue to be improving himself. We have a large number of examples in India which have shown us such examples of improvement. Abdul Kalam, an ordinary person from an ordinary family with very great difficulty in education, became a great scientist. Not only that, he was made the president of India. And he continued to teach and learn from various people. Great examples of people who continued to work all their lives into various forms of activity. There is no end to this kind of improvement that you can do if you're passionate to do that. I cannot but give even other examples and plenty of such examples in our country of people who have done fantastically in various forms of activity, coming from very poor backgrounds, inadequate backgrounds, having very little resources, and still being able to do great things in various forms of activity, including entrepreneurship that may be there. But it's not necessary that such qualities and activity can better themselves only to become an entrepreneur. You can do any other activity which would do it. And all these aspects of life which make good and great entrepreneurs can be applicable to any other profession or any other activity or any other service that we are right to bring to this. It's only an example that I can share with you that you will not be successful in, as an entrepreneur, but you will be successful in life as a whole if you follow some of these learnings which I have been able to imbibe from great people in our country. And I keep on learning from it even today. And of course, uh, before I take the question answers, the best example of all 
is our beloved Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. Can you imagine just being a chaiwala, now working towards, became the Chief Minister of Gujarat, did such huge amount of infrastructure development of Gujarat, industrialization, bringing about solar power in Gujarat region, one of the, one of the first Chief Ministers to see alternate energy to be done in such a broad spectrum manner and to industrialize the state, which was not so much advanced before his time. And now to take up the leadership of the country and become the prime minister, an ordinary humble man who can do, who has no other great education like you and I have got. So you have a bigger and better and easier springboard of opportunity to become great, to take up various things, including entrepreneurship, to take up any activity that you do, but do it passionately, do it well, do it with all your heart. Keep on looking at new ideas, looking at new technologies, lots and lots of opportunities that are there. I'm sure that the students of VGTI will stand apart in this country in lots of activity that it's going to do. And we will be proud to know that yes, these were the students of 2021 who were here at VGTI at that time and have now gone ahead to be great entrepreneurs, great people, professionals and otherwise who have done a great job in, in our country. So I wish you uh, the very best to each and every one of you. But and I'm looking forward to any amount of question answers that you may have, which I would love to answer in order to see what we can do. Sure. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank uh, you and wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Yes, you carry on. Thank you, sir, uh, for such an insightful lecture. Uh, I'm sure that I'm speaking on behalf of the entire audience watching us right now, that you have revealed groundbreaking thoughts and promising ideas while instilling a new perspective in our lives. Uh, we'll now begin with the Q&A session to answer a few of our audience questions. Sir, the first question for you is, starting your career as an accounting teacher, how did you think of the real estate business as a career prospect? What were the difficulties faced by you during the initial stages? So it's a big story, but I'll try to keep it short. Uh, I started, I, during my college time, during uh, college internships, I went to uh, Gualerion and Century Mills to do textile internships. And I set up a small factory at Charco, Kandivali, of a textile unit and did a small investment into real estate. And after a couple of years working on both these lines, I was doing badly in both. And I had to close down one because I didn't have enough money to do so. So, and I couldn't decide which one to close down. But I got a letter from the union of my textile unit which said they wanted a 100% increase in wages. Actually, they would have been satisfied with 10%. But the letter was uh, God sent because it helped me to decide that, oh, I'm going to have trouble with labor maybe in the future, which happened in Mumbai and many textile units closed down, but I could anticipate and uh, do it because of this union, which was too kind to me. And I sold off my textile unit and leaped fully into real estate. So I don't know, maybe if uh, the union letter had not come, I would have been a textile uh, a leader and not uh, uh, this thing. So opportunities will keep on coming differentially. And uh, so real estate is a matter of uh, one of the two opportunities that I started, but dwelt into it. And But once I went into real estate, I didn't look back. I just uh, swam into it and uh, uh, focused on it because I thought there's nothing else to do. And I wanted to be successful. Like my father was a doctor, very, very, very successful. I wanted to be a successful in my whatever work I was doing. And I enjoyed teaching too. So I continued to teach and I do teach even today, but not as much as I would like. Thank you, sir. That was a really motivational story. Uh, so the next question for you is, 
uh, there's a lot of debate as a digital wave is leading to major transformations in the construction industry from being more labor intensive to being automated with ai and iot what's your take on this uh sai you are absolutely correct uh, the changes have taken place not only in real estate but in all industry a uh, lot of people are challenged by the unavailability of uh, uh, labor especially skill labor in the real estate industry so we have uh, had to actually automate to a great extent use a lot of machines which were not there before we use new shorts of shuttering material we are using many more cranes and other activity to lift uh, the core activity things to be done so a lot of changes have taken place uh, uh, ai and other tools are also used in terms of designing in order to bring about an efficiency in cost of construction we also use iot in terms of marketing tools in order to see how and uh, targeting the audience for the purposes of marketing and sales so alternate intelligence artificial intelligence and other activity in terms of it is very widely used look at the opportunity today i'm speaking to you over the vc rather than coming physically to your college and in, at the quadrangle which i spoke to years ago so all these changes are taking place much more rapidly today uh the other angle sai which you alluded to was the fact that uh, yes there is going to be a change because a lot of people can also work from home so this opportunity is definitely happening but it's not happening widely enough for the purposes of making a dip in the changes in the commercial uh, spaces that are there but yes the changes have taken place a large number of people have an opportunity to work from home successfully but there are inefficiencies in these things which are happening so i think it's going to be a blend of working from home and working from the uh, uh, commercial spaces or things to be done changes have taken place and will continue to take place as opportunities change over a period of years that was truly educational sir we'll move on to the next question infrastructure should always be ahead of the marketplace is what you said in an interview but whenever something like that is done it is always touted as luxury rather than something that as you said should be done do you think this will have much larger repercussions in the future or are we already suffering because of our negligence in the past oh my god uh, uh, this is a favorite question of mine and i always uh, take a deep breath before answering it over a period of years our infrastructure in our cities country has been very deficit it's now that the prime minister has focused on infrastructure that is really taking place uh but in the last in, in the current period we are there is a huge effort to improve infrastructure in india uh, we are now constructing 35 kilometers of uh, of uh, national highway per day so that's a huge change which has taken place from 3 kilometers of national highway per day uh, we are now at 35 37 and i believe the target is going about 40 kilometers per day uh, so that's big look at the mumbai infrastructure uh, we are adding 300 kilometers of metro for 70 years we had 190 kilometers of uh, western railway central railway and harbor line which was 190 kilometers for 60 years 70 years now we are adding 300 kilometers in the next 5 years that's a big one we are now adding we are adding the cross harbor bridge what is called the mthl bridge and that bridge will open up as much land as half of mumbai across the pub harbor from panvel to karcher uh, we are getting a new airport at uh, navi mumbai we have a row row connectivity to alibag and we have a coastal road which will connect the western side of mumbai so we are going to add 3 lakh crores of infrastructure in the next 5 years in the metro in the mumbai metropolitan region and in the last 50 years we we have the central and state government had spent 30000 crores in 70 years in 5 years uh, we will be spending only in the mumbai metropolitan region 3 lakh crores so uh, these were all deficits for many years of course there are i can mention about 
1,000 items where we are de deficit in uh, infrastructure. But, you know, it's no use crying over spilt milk, which I cannot, you know, bring up again together. But I'm happy that at least the present and the future looks much brighter in terms of a commitment. And if you know about the Prime Minister's statement last week about actually doing infrastructure of $100 trillion of uh, uh, $100 tr trillion, lakh, a trillion crores of infrastructure in the next uh, 10, 15 years, and I think uh, the infrastructure concentration is definitely there. And hence, it's an opportunity for all the engineers that we have today in, your, in our colleges where there is a big opportunity of jobs and other things. That was an enlightening answer, sir. And I'm sure it has left the audience curious for more. So we will quickly move on to the next question. What was the initiative, vision, and hard work behind making the world's second largest database center, Yota NM1, in Mumbai? Well, I wish I could take the full credit for it. Uh, this project is uh, conceived by my son, Darshan Hiranandani, and uh, he is uh, the actually uh, the vision and thought process of putting up data centers. Uh, I can take credit for being his bab. Uh, so... Uh, to that extent, I do credit and I did, uh, you know, give him input of uh, funds into the project, but actually he's put in a lot of hard work and labor in order to start this uh, data center. And now multiple data centers will come up. Uh, the second one is coming up in Greater Noida and uh, very soon more announcements of data center. The prime minister has made a statement that uh, there will be data localization. Of course, the law has not been passed but it's expected any moment. And uh, it will be imperative for a large amount of India data to be actually located in India. And hence, the, having data centers in India will be uh, great. And this will be a great opportunity for a lot of Indians to be able to do analytical studies, artificial intelligence in the line of data, data mining, data thinking, and artificial intelligence will certainly be a basis for the data centers that have been created. Uh, and it's worthwhile, it's one of the finest centers in the entire world, uh, very beautifully done in, uh, uh, at Navi Mumbai, Panwen. And uh, it's, worth, uh, worth a, it's worth a look of that center because it's really very, very beautiful. And, and it's a tier four, which is the highest rated data center in the world. Amazing, amazing. I did not know that, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, creating such wonderful facility. Uh, coming to the previous question, you talked about hundreds of trillions of infrastructure. So eventually the money is coming from where it's uh, tax money or uh, what money? How the money is being, uh, you know, uh, taken in there? So Dr. Deren Patel, uh, the good news is that there is so much money available all over the world that you cannot imagine. Uh, the uh, 60% of the money of 3 lakh crores coming from Japan at an interest rate of 0.1%. In the first 15 years, no EMI for the principal is to be paid. And then it's 35 years of payment. So when you have a good project, which is financially viable, and it has necessary ingredients of completion and making viability, there is no dearth of money either in the private sector or in the government sector for the purposes of funding. I was speaking to Mr. Nitin Gadkari the other day, and uh, he just keeps on thinking that even in the government sector, there's no shortage. For example, the roads that he's building, and after the tolls have started connecting, he's doing what is called the uh, INVITS, uh, Investment Trust. And there is so much money all over the world available for the purposes of investment trust. But up till now, we were not having people like him and others in the private sector to actually institutionalize, package this in order that international investments could come. So today, for all these projects, we have sufficient money, international money, central government, state governments, and private sector investments. And with the boom in the stock markets, there's no dearth of money today. Capital is not short. It is the dearth of good projects uh, which are fundable, uh, that those are short. And the country has, the world has so much money to go by in opportunity, in private equity, in uh, FDI, 
in FFI investments, in IPOs, in INVITs, and others. So funding is not a, uh, is not a constraint, but actually good projects and viable good projects are constrained. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. I would love to visit the data center you talked about. Uh, maybe certainly <clears throat> yeah, when the we'll opportunity arises. We can have it. Yes. We can have thank you. Visit, thank you. Thank you. Next question. Wow, sir, that was truly inspirational. Uh, this brings us to the last question for today. There were points in your life where you made really quick and accurate decisions. How did you develop this essential ability? Um, <laughs> uh, Sai, you must remember one thing that all entrepreneurs who have a long period of time have fallen many times and caught up again. Over a period of time, you do make mistakes, but you must learn to correct them quickly. There is no entrepreneur in the world who has not failed at some point of time in some project in some way. But you have to learn to get up again and start walking. So if you've fallen down, if you got hurt, you made a mistake, get up, correct yourself and move on. It's not the person who has fallen, but the person who has fallen who refuses to get up and get start moving again. So even runners, you will see many of the world runners who have won races and long distance races, they fall many times and uh, things happen, but uh, they don't give up. So the main thing is you can't give up on things. Uh, once you've taken them and uh, worked on them, you have to passionately work. You have to overcome hurdles. You have to overcome problems and uh, any sort of work and any sort of thing. Uh, I think life is all about those challenges which are there. So it's not about taking the right decisions all the time. You, you can't and no one can. Uh, the best of companies in the world have made mistakes, but the best of companies and the best of people in the world know how to correct them quickly or to get up again when they have fallen down. So if you are hurt, if you have fallen, if you have made a mistake, the secret is not to worry about the mistake and look at the rear view mirror of the car, but to look at the front of the car and start moving again as quickly as possible. So be ready to fail, be ready to find difficulties, be ready to fall down, be ready to have all the pain that you have, be ready to have been cheated, uh, which I have been many times in my life. Uh, but you, once you're ready to get up and speak again, get ready to work again, uh, it, it all you, you forget about those stupid things which have happened, which are negative. In the balance sheet of life, uh, if you learn to take, second, I do so much activity besides uh, my real estate business. I uh, handle schools, colleges, hospitals, temples, and other uh, skill development centers and other things besides assisting in the data center and all. Uh, so obviously, uh, you take hundreds of decisions on every matter every day. And of course, some things go wrong, but no, 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 no issue at all. Let them go wrong. Let us go and work up again. You can never, ever fail if you get up quickly enough, correct yourself and move on. Thank you so much, sir. We are truly honored by your presence today. It was indeed an impactful session and we're glad to be a part of it. Also, thank you to our wonderful audience for tuning in. We hope you all enjoyed the session. This marks the end of the Hourglass Conclave 5.0. Stay tuned for more upcoming lectures. And with that in mind, I'm Sai Karyekar signing off. Until next time, this is Technovanza VJTI.